Mr. Abbott here in time for another boring activity explanation. This is for the isobar mapping activity, which is lab number 30 for 2019. Now, there are a couple of skills that you will be doing with this lab. One thing that you have to do is you have to correctly draw isobars. Okay, and you'll see that on weather maps, they tend to use a four millibar interval and the other skill we're practicing with this activity is to de determine the wind direction at a particular station model and this is really based on two things one is the pressure gradient force the other one is the Coriolis force uh, since all of this is in the northern hemisphere or we're assuming it's the northern hemisphere that's going to bend or deflect winds to the right and we're going to show those on uh, the station models that are indicated on the isobar maps. Um, the first isobar map you did in class, you could actually check this, but these were the isobars that you drew. This is a high pressure. A high pressure is also known as a cyclone, and you should know, you have to know, that in high pressure, the winds go out and clockwise. So a mnemonic that you can use for this is HOC. Um, just to illustrate how I found the winds, I'm going to look at this and make up four more stations um, to show you the proper method. So in each quadrant, you're supposed to draw one. So I'm going to just imagine there's a station between the 1028 and the 1024. The pressure gradient is going to push the air from high pressure to low pressure. The Coriolis force deflects the winds, and the wind shaft is going to be opposite. So at this station, it's going out and clockwise from the center. If I rotate this a little bit this way, this line would be 1024. This would be 1020. So if we imagine that there's this larger station here, the pressure gradient force goes from high to low. The Coriolis force deflects it to the right, and the winds would be going this way. Once again, that's out and clockwise. If I rotate my map around, okay, I'm looking at the same two isobars. I have 1,028 and 1,024. So if there was a station here, it would be going from the higher to the lower isobar. That's the pressure gradient force. It gets deflected to the right by the Coriolis force, and the winds would be going that way. When I turn to this quadrant, we have 1,028 to 1,024. Here the isobars are farther apart. We're going to learn that you put feathers on the wind shaft to show the wind speed. Here the isobars are farther apart. It would be a lower wind speed, but the pressure gradient force would be going from high to low. The Coriolis force would be deflecting it to the right. So here the winds would be going out and clockwise. So in the northern hemisphere with a low pressure, if I just want to show you sort of arrows in, uh, sorry, in a high pressure, also called an anticyclone, the winds tend to be blowing out and clockwise, and that honestly is the general circulation that we got from that high pressure system. Now, map two, I'm going to take you through the entire map. For map two, okay, I told you which lines to draw, we're going to start at 984 and we're going to go to 1000. Um, you usually want to start near the highest or lowest values. Um, so there's a 984 here. There was one other 984. The 982 should be inside the 984. So my first ISO bar should have been a closed loop and look something like that. And I'll label it 984. 988, I'm going to find these. There's one over here, 
I see a 987 down here, but there are no other measured values of 988. So a line separates higher values from lower values. My 988 has to go between these two. So I'm gonna scoot it here. My 988 goes around the 987. It's gotta come up over here. And my 988 is also gonna form a closed loop because along the borders of the map it's higher. Okay, probably it could have even been smoother in here. But that works, I go to 988. 992, there's this one 9092 that people sometimes miss out here. There's a 992 here. We've got a whole bunch of values of 992, but your 992 has to separate values greater from 992 from those less than 992. So it's gonna be a closed loop and it might look something like that. Now this one, because the isobars are getting lower, is going to be a low pressure system. So I'm going to put my big L. Another name for a low pressure is a cyclone. Honestly, cyclones tend to bring, you know, bad weather, storm systems. 996, okay. My 996 go off the page. I'm going to hit that 996. It definitely has to go between these two. So my line comes here. I want to make it a continuous line. I hit this 996. It goes between the 998 and I'm going to take it off the map. Label this one 996. Um, definitely there are values that are greater than a thousand and less than a thousand. ISO lines you know, like this ISO bar could run off the map for a thousand here. You definitely need a thousand between the 996 and the thousand one, and we actually have a measured value of a thousand millibars in that corner. So this is, you know, a pattern that you're getting around a low pressure cyclone. You don't have to draw these, but I think this makes it easier for you to visualize. So I'm going to just draw a dashed coordinate system through the center of my low. We're going to pick four station models and think about the direction that the wind should be blowing at one station in each quadrant. Um, the mnemonic for low is lick low is in and counterclockwise. So for all of these, the winds blow from the higher isobar towards the lower isobar. Um, I may as well pick this 985. This one I'll just draw pressure gradient, bend to the right for the Coriolis, and there it's going counterclockwise and towards the center. I flip around to this quadrant. May as well do this 996. It's going to blow towards the center from the higher to the lower isobar. So I do pressure gradient, goes straight, Coriolis, and then my wind shaft might be in that direction. Flip it over here. All right, most of these, here's a 998. So it's going to go from 1,000 to 996. Okay, the pressure gradient is pushing the air towards the center. It gets bent or deflected to the right. So my winds might be going like that. Finally, over here, maybe I'll take this 996. The lower pressure is here, the higher pressure is outside. Pressure gradient pushes it towards the center, but it's deflected to the right, so the winds are going this way. So in a low pressure, the winds converge, they move towards the center, but you see that the winds would be coming in and going counterclockwise based on those four station models that we have drawn. All right, the last one has both 
a cyclone and an anticyclone. Okay, this is what your map should have looked like. Okay, you'll see the 990 millibar is the lowest. Um, there is an area of 998 over here. Some people to choose to draw this as one continuous isobar, but I think this is a more likely interpretation. But you've got a low pressure cyclone and a high pressure anticyclone up here. Um, we're looking at four stations. This time you should be getting used to, you know, high to low pressure gradient Coriolis. So pressure gradient Coriolis, the winds here would be going this way. Take this one, pressure gradient, bend it to the right Coriolis, the winds are going that way. Maybe I do the 995, the pressure gradient is pushing towards the center but it's being deflected by the Coriolis force. And this one, somewhere in this quadrant, maybe this one, towards the center, bent to the right. Okay, so in a low, definitely that's a cyclone. So it's low in and counterclockwise. We'll see that the air is gonna rise in the center of the low that forms clouds. Here's my high, my anticyclone. It's going from the higher 1014 to the lower 1010. So the winds are blowing away, but they're bending to the right. Okay, for this one, it's away, but it's deflected to the right. Maybe this 13 is going away, but it's deflected to the right. And then over here, um, yeah, may as well do this one. Here's my 14 to 10. It goes out, it deflects to the right. So once again, we're seeing the high pressure hand twist model goes out to the right. Low pressure, it converges. Hand twist model, it goes in and counterclockwise. So that's just a review of the skills that you need. Hopefully you found this helpful if you got stuck. Um, Good luck. Take care.